Hey everybody, good morning. It is day 78 of spiritual health care. Welcome. I uh, hope you guys had a great night last night. Uh, great day. Um, it is awesome to see everybody. Good morning to all of you. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I always start at like a minute or so early because it seems like some people get the notifications at different times that, that it's live. So I'm always like starting it at different times and whatnot. Good morning, Patricia and Dale and Marge is there and Kaz is there. Nice to see everybody. Hey guys. Uh, good morning, Ed. Uh, good morning to everybody logging in. It is so good to see all of you. Um, Oh gosh, yeah, so many, so many questions, so many topics that that came in that I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm just stoked about. Um, really different stuff we're gonna chat about today, so this is really cool. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, how are you? <laughs> it's another spiritual healthcare morning, day seventy eight. Here we go. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, for those of you who are in Canada and are on um, the the CERB payments and are born in like November December, today is your day, by the way, to uh, to uh, reapply for the the June edition of CERB. So, um, putting that out there as well for all of you guys, all of the Canadians out there who are who are like me, um, self employed and whatnot, and still can't go back to to group gatherings and things like that yet. So, though that's happening. So, good morning, everybody. Um, how are you? Um, it is is good to see everybody. Uh, it's this, this afternoon and this morning, wherever you are. I know some people, it's the middle of the night for you, <laughs> depending on where you are in the world, uh, especially all the people from the UK and, and whatnot that log in uh, every day. Uh, so it's, it's so good to see everybody. And um, today is, is going to be really fun. We've got a, we had a great question yesterday from Connor that I want to uh, 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 grab because it was about Edmonton and the hauntings and our, uh, our downtown coal mines. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit, which are, it's very, it's really interesting. Edmonton's got a very like unknown history to it. it, it it's really cool. Um, and then we've got some really neat questions that came in, um, everything from like aliens to cryptozoology, all sorts of things. So yeah, so we're going to like go through the gambit today. It's like a, a myriad of, of different topics, but, um, I think this is going to be, it's going to be really fun. So I have to like, I have to start actually personally, like physically scrolling through the comments now because it doesn't seem to be like <laughs> it doesn't seem to be loading them for me anymore I just have to like touch the screen and read them so that's what I'm doing if I'm looking like I'm doing something weird that's what I'm doing um so yeah so this is gonna be really good and uh I say covering lots of things like lots and lots of things um Connor yesterday had such a, a good question and I'll, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about um, Ed Edmonton's history where I live uh, because it's 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 really interesting and because his question was was just great um, Edmonton has got a uh, a, a long well we've got a long-standing history of um, uh, uh, uprooting uh, First Nations people here. Um, there was a lot of, uh, there was almost like basically civil war that was going on along the North Saskatchewan River uh, and things like that uh, when the Europeans came in and they moved in like, like 1800s. So they've come in and the Papas Chase, which was uh, our First Nations people that were, were settled here in Alberta uh, and they had a thriving population. Everything was going really well for them. And then we end up, you know, we see these Europeans come in. They wanted to take over the land for money and mining and all of that kind of thing. And there was there was a massive feud and um, the Papas Chase, needless to say, did not do well. They did not fare well. And it was it was absolutely tragic, and and our river valley was just it was a mess. We had we had burial grounds everywhere. It was it was just it was awful. Um, so anyway, once all of once once all of this happened, and the Europeans kind of came in and started uh, 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 uprooting Alberta, right? For for mining, one thing that they discovered in Alberta in or in Edmonton was uh, coal, and the coal, of course, because it was the big profit, the money maker. Uh, at the time, um, they discovered most of it was in the river valley, which was, of course, the uh, you know the major settlements of the Papas Chase and um, and those people, and uh, they started to uproot everything. So they they ended up digging what they call gopher mines, which were are basically like these these mines that dig into the side of of cliffs, right? So our river valley is like this great big it's just great big valley, but we. The, our, our city kind of sits on top of one of those hills. So basically what they would do is they would dig into the side of these mountains, right? Or into the side of these cliff sides. And um, it, the tunnels would go right underneath um, where one of our main avenues are, which is Jasper Avenue. 
and uh, they go quite a quite a distance. So that kind of gives you an idea as to what these coal mines are. And there was only ever one mining collapse. There was only ever one, and um, I think there was only I think it was like one death or something like that during you know during that time period, which is which is not bad cons <laughs> considering the time period. Um, and uh, and yeah, so when when Jasper Ave and the stores and stuff like that started to go up. Um, a lot of the basements and things like that ended up being dug into the coal mines, right? Um, same with our LRT system, which is basically like the subway um, for Americans, uh, subway or like a like the tr the train basically, uh, the tube for those of you guys who are in the UK, um, and that's that's kind of how everything was set up. So. Connor's question yesterday was, speaking of hauntings being related to geological phenomenon, what do you think about the theories? What do you think about the theories about a relationship between the various hauntings in Edmonton and the Jasper Avenue coal mines? Are the two related? Because I hear a lot of stories from a lot of buildings that supposedly broke into a vein of the mine upon construction. So that's where this question is coming from. So you guys kind of have a basis for it. And um, the I was I was fortunate enough to be able to investigate part of the sort of the coal mine area twice. Um, there was a little internet cafe that used to be on Jasper Avenue called Naked on Jasper and its basement when you when you went down underneath still had the old mining elevators that were there like the ones you see in the movies with the with the danger beware or you know caution signs on the on the wood gate and you open the gate and you get in the elevator and it goes down um, so that was still there. Um, there was old um, uh, safes and stuff like that that were there as well. So it was a really interesting place. Um, we never, we th there was activity that was reported there. Um, people would claim that the safe, which was this great big giant monster of a safe, would open and close on its own. I mean, the door was like this thick. Like, it was, it was crazy. There's no way you could just, you know, the wind was not going to, you know, disturb this door. And so that would open and close on its own. People were hearing um, uh, children's voices and things like that down down in that area. Um, and what was interesting was that up above, when they did all the renovations, there was a lot of old electrical and wiring that was like running along the roof. The, the, the roof of the basement, the ceiling of the basement was very low. And you had all of this kind of electrical stuff that was underneath of it, which was like ridiculously dangerous. It was just the stupidest layout. Um, but it had all this electrical kind of underneath. And, uh, you know, I think, I think we had, again, when we look at environmental phenomenon, you know, you, you start to wonder if there's a, a relationship with that and, and some residual energy that's going on underneath. Um, the movement needless to say of the safe is not residual energy. That's more of a, a, a uh, like that's a that's a physical interaction with the environment um but the fellow that we were working with at the time um jason selkirk who is a real was an excellent medium um was talking with a spirit who was who was in the area it was a, a an asian man who had passed away uh during that time period and he was he was relatively informative about um the stuff that had had gone on in the area and things like that and came up with there was a number of dates that jason walked away with um that uh that weren't recorded until we started you know digging around so it was it was a really cool investigation it was interesting um so in terms of like the hauntings uh, in general on jasper and the coal mines i think when you get into you know you know down and down and dirty with it I, that was the only story that i'd heard about uh in relationship to the coal mines themselves um most of the hauntings on jasper have seemed to be unrelated like there's one at a bookstore uh on jasper where uh there was a a bank robbery and whatnot and uh there the the, the bookstore used to be a bank on the upper levels and um it said that the uh, the owner of the bank who was shot during the robbery still comes and back and forth and checks on his on his space um every once in a while so a lot of the hauntings on jasper seem to be very unrelated to the to the coal mines uh in and of itself and uh and i think that's just because there was it was such an active area you know at the time and and i don't think there was uh you know obviously there wasn't enough you know emotional or events or something like that to to stimulate um more coal mine related stuff um also the coal mines themselves are are somewhat inaccessible now so trying to get down under into the actual mines themselves you really can't um as far as i know so i'm, I'm guessing that that has something to do with it as well but there's i mean there's plenty of hauntings on jasper Ave. It's it's a really cool cool strip um you can go to um well there's a the you know one of the hospitals that's down there there's um there's just a plethora or of course our river valley um hotel mcdonald's there's uh, we just 
tons. Uh, Union Bank in lots of places. So it was pretty neat. Um, so yeah, so I, th I think there's 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 tons of hauntings down there. What I've heard about the coal mines, there's not a ton of, of activity in relationship to them, but they're cool. <laughs> they're really, really, really cool. Um, and our investigation down there was, was pretty neat. It was, it was really interesting. Um, so I had another question come in last night uh, from a fellow named John, and I thought this was a great question. It was, what's your favorite genre of paranormal stuff apart from the paranormal, apart from hauntings and, and whatnot. And I thought this was a great question. So I had to, I had to grab it. There was, a, there was a few that came in that I thought were really good. Um, so my favorite one, honestly, is, pro is probably cryptozoology. I love cryptids. I love them. I think they're fantastic. I should scroll a little bit, make sure I'm not like missing people's comments. Um, so yeah, my favorite, my favorite has got to be cryptozoology. If I was not doing this, I would be in, in the cryptid world, but it's so expensive to <laughs> <laughs> to get into and and I probably I probably kill myself in the woods I probably wouldn't make it like I can't imagine I don't think I would be do I, I don't think I would do well trying to like forge through mountain trails I don't know so I <laughs> I don't know but I, I love it I love it I love the idea of of going into um uh going into these you know amazing unknown locations um, being able to uh, investigate animals that have not uh, ever been discovered before and have kind of been sitting as legend. Um, I absolutely think it's, it's, it's phenomenal. It's uh, like everything from Bigfoot and Yeti and, uh, uh, you know, all of these various creatures over the years. And then the creatures, of course, that have been discovered, right? Like um, one animal that was originally considered a cryptid was the gorilla, right? So they, and they thought that was crazy and mythical and you know it seemed silly and then bam all of a sudden you know son of a bitch we got a gorilla uh so it was pretty cool so um yeah i love it i love it i love the uh, the science that has been going into things especially like bigfoot and yeti over the last number of years that it's being finally taken seriously um i definitely think they exist um we've got quite a number of sightings and whatnot here in alberta which is really cool of course the majority of them being in bc um especially near the island uh vancouver island and victoria and stuff like that um we've got quite a few of those and um, in alberta we've had a recent sighting near in calgary believe it or not near calgary uh, wooded area um, and the videos on YouTube. I'll post it. I'll find it and post it for you guys. It's really cool um, Some hikers and whatnot had seen one and got some pretty good film footage and uh, yeah So I, I would I would do that. Um, I think some of the stories are so brilliant and so inspiring um, I've met some amazing uh, Witnesses and people over the years who have are brilliant investigators like just amazing um, especially groups like the Olympic Project, I think is phenomenal. Um, they are some, probably some of the most dedicated investigators I've ever met. Uh, they are, they're just really, really good. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, I would, I would head in that direction for, for myself as cryptids. So the other, <laughs> one of the other questions that I got earlier was, and I thought this was great, is that, is there a favorite crazy ass conspiracy theory that you love hearing about? <sighs> Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. So, <laughs> um, the favorite in terms of the craziest, um, I think for me, one of the craziest things is the lizard people. I think that's one of the most nutty things I've, I've heard. Um, the, the lizard people I think is, is, is great. And I think it's, it's funny for me because I have a, I have a snake. So I think that's one of the reasons why it, it makes me laugh because, you know, I, I'm always imagining Galen at some, on some level is, is, you know, planning something and when he's, when he's not with me, like, I always feel like, okay, if he wants to stay in that night or something like that, that maybe he's got some sort of something going on. I don't know. But the lizard people I find so weird. I, th I think it's the, the weirdest thing. Um, so do I believe in lizard people? No, I don't. I don't think there's lizard people. I, <laughs> sorry to everybody that, the, that if you message me about lizard people, I will tell you, I don't know anything about them. I have no idea, but Galen might be conspiring to do something. I have no idea. Probably. Um, so that was a really, really great one. <laughs> great one. I don't know if you guys, if you guys have favorite conspiracy, like weird conspiracies like that, like the lizard people, does any, like it, you guys should post, post some of that. Um, Wes says they have the lizard man in our area. Yeah. The lizard man is different. The lizard man is, um, uh, is more about, uh, like an actual, like moving creature around with the, with the lizard people there, they seem to be more like, they're like political figures that are disguised as, as, as lizard people 
men or something or no they're they're like political figures that lizard men are disguised as that's it um and the the queen is supposed to be a lizard person and and this kind of thing but but there's it's interesting like talking about cryptids in that area um that's really interesting is the fact that um you know that we we tend to get um, these various descriptions, like it was the goat man, the goat man was one, um, for, for a while. I think that's still, that's still cited every once in a while. Um, but just some really, really bizarre ones. The Appalachian mountains are such a plethora of these strange sightings of, of animals and, and things like that. Um, the, the skunk ape is something that, that has always been really interesting to me. And I have a theory about the skunk ape. So the skunk ape, for those of you guys who don't know the, the term, it's, a, it's a, uh, almost like a, a Bigfoot type creature in Florida uh, and is seen in the Florida Everglades and whatnot, like wandering around the Florida Everglades. And there was a, a very striking photo that was taken of a, a what they believe is a skunk ape. Um, and it looks almost like an orangutan, like a male orangutan. It's got like the big cheeks and and, and whatnot. And it's, it's got sort of this orangey red hair and, and whatever. And so here's my theory about this, the skunk ape. Back in like back in the like 1900s, okay, before the skunk ape started being sighted, what would happen is that you'd have these circuses, okay, that would go through, and they would do their tours, they would do their runs, they would have all their you know their animals and whatnot, and they would stop in Florida and they would dump the animals in the Florida Everglades. They would they would dump everything like monkeys and like all sorts of all sorts of stuff. Um, and what's interesting, so even like bigger apes, like orangutans, chimps, all of that kind of stuff, they were all left in the Florida Everglades because they just, it was like, oh, we don't want to take care of them. We don't need them anymore. So we're going to let them go. Um, so I kind of wonder if there's something like that that's going on with the skunk ape. There was a, um, in the, uh, in, 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 in Exmoor, in, uh, in the UK, in Exmoor, um, the beast of Exmoor, which was this giant black cat great big panther and everybody's said oh no it's all crazy um you know there's no big black cats in in uh, in the uk now they know that there is there's now solid proof of that um lots of people have seen them up close photos and now what they realize is what was going on was that people were illegally keeping these these, these like rich guys were illegally keeping these these great big black panthers and whatnot and then when they realized that it was illegal or they were going to get caught they'd let that let the panther go um, so they realized that now it's like, yeah, there's this population of these great big black panthers that are like wandering around <laughs> in certain parts of Exmoor in the UK and things like that. Um, so I, I question whether the skunk ape was something very similar to that, where it was, you know, these animals were released and now you've got these, you know, orangutans or whatever that has, have adapted to the Florida Everglades and over the years, just, you know, over the, the last century and bam, you've got a, you know, you've got a bizarre animal that's now wandering around. So it's really interesting. So uh, Marge is saying um, it's really odd that we haven't found a dead, dead Bigfoot. And you know what's funny about that is the fact that there has been very few dead big cats found either, apart from like being shot or roadkill and, and things like that. Um, and, you know, I always wonder because, you know, you've got such an intelligent animal, um, you know, we see elephants and things like that, that have, you know, funeral services and, and whatnot for their dead. Um, you know, they will, they will have an elephant die and they will come and line up and pay their respects and whatnot. And it wouldn't surprise me if you had something like a, a culture of Bigfoot or something like that, that buried their dead. Wouldn't shock me. Um, you know, you've got something that seems to be very tied in with, uh, with uh, 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 people, um, you know, they definitely seem to have their own way of life and their way of, you know, way of being. And, and according to the First Nations people as well, um, the First Nations people have, have described often that they have their own community. Like they've, they, they don't, they have an agreement with the First Nations in some areas where, you know, they stay on their territory, the, uh, the First Nations stay on, on their their plot of land and neither the twain shall meet because they've been fighting in the past. So, um, so it seems like they have somewhat of a of a culture if you if you go by the, what the First Nations have said about them, and um, it wouldn't surprise me if they were if they were buried at some point. I I don't know, um, but it's interesting. So so Brandy is saying, who are what is the lizard people? Okay, so this this is the theory behind the lizard people. If you if you want to go down the rabbit hole with it, look up David Ike. Uh, his I I C K E is his last name. 
Um, and, but be prepared. I'm telling you, be prepared. I do not subscribe to David Icke's theory. I'm just going to make that completely clear. Um, but they, there's a, there are a group of people that believe that there are, um, that these big politicians and leaders and people like Mark Zuckerberg and, you know, all these people are actually these lizard aliens in disguise. Um, and they alter our perception somehow and, uh, and uh <laughs> and make us think that they're people but they're actually these these aliens and it's it these these lizard lizard people lizard people um so yeah it is it is one of the strangest things i think i've i've heard um uh darren was is mentioning um mothman mothman there's another one so mothman is is another really fascinating one i don't know how many people have have are familiar with some of those cases um probably the most uh prevalent being um point pleasant in um uh you know in uh in the with the bridge that that ended up collapsing and uh mothman is is interesting it's kind of seen as a as a warning uh so you know people that have seen this this great big winged creature with these these really bright red eyes um, and there's sightings that, that are, um, that pick up right before there's a disaster, like there's an event or a disaster, uh, or something like that. And so people say, if you see Mothman, it's not so good because it's an omen that something is, uh, something is about to happen because every single time there's a Mothman encounter within days, there's some sort of a, a bridge collapse or disaster or, you know, people pass away or there's something going on. Um, so Mothman is, yeah, really, really fascinating stuff. Um, and again, it's kind of like we're getting these it's like we're getting these glimpses into these other parts of our world that maybe we can't see all the time. Um, and that's my take on, like, I, I think a fair amount of this stuff is I think, I think we are, our perception plays a lot to do with, uh, you know, what we're, we're allowing into our, our world and our, and our field of vision. Um, you know, when it comes to, when it comes to things like, uh, 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 you know, Bigfoot and things like that, it's a, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, it's such an interesting phenomenon, but I think, I think Bigfoot is, is an animal of some sort. I think it's physical. Um, Ed's asking what the, what would the rake be classified as? I think the rake is interesting because it falls in my opinion into the same category as the Wendigo. Um, so I think we've got, I think with the rake and things like that, we've got like a supernatural, um, kind of like a supernatural entity. I, I don't think it, it doesn't seem like a physical thing. Um, uh, it seems to be able to kind of manifest in and out of spaces, um, in the same way that the Wendigo does. And, and interestingly, a lot of that, that type of folklore kind of layers on top of one another. So when we look at things like the Skinwalker, the rake, uh, Wendigo, um, uh, Whiskey Jack, all of, all of those types of, uh, 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 phenomena. Um, yeah, it's, it's so interesting because they seem to kind of layer on, on top of one another. And that's something I think we should go into tomorrow because it's, it, that is a, a phenomenal thing. And it leads into, um, the next, the next question that I got, which I think we can, we're, we're going to tackle tomorrow, which is what's the most bizarre paranormal concept that you're willing to entertain with the rational part of your brain? No kidding. Um, yeah. And I think, and I, and that's, that's definitely the answer to it. So I'll, I'll we'll, we'll get into that tomorrow because it's, 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 it's a really interesting field. Um, when we get into that kind of thing. And, um, it was, it, those, those are subcategories that I, I kind of never thought that I would be, um, you know, I would be validating as I went along with, uh, with, with paranormal research. And I've, I've had a very interesting encounter, um, over the last number of years, uh, with a, a very good friend of mine who had a tie in with, um, a very famous Wendigo story here in Alberta. And so tomorrow I'm going to talk to you guys about that and tell you about it. And I'm, I'm hoping that one of these, uh, one of these days I'll be able to bring him on with me and you guys can, can talk to him and ask questions about it because, um, it's, it's, his story is incredible and, um, it's, it's worth hearing about for sure. Um, I wrote about it in my book, um, teaching the living and, um, it was, uh, it, yeah, it ended up to be a, just a remarkable thing. And there's, there's more information that's come out over the last week, which is, which is nuts, um, that we've been kind of going back and forth about and, uh, and, and uncovering. And it just seems like the story's like an onion. It just peels and peels and peels and peels. And about every few months we get a new tidbit or lead of, of information. And it, we found out today that the, the case actually ties into an abandoned hospital that, um, that has been here in Edmonton. And it's one that I was actually born at. So there's, <laughs> There's more, there's more, there's more to the story. It's, it's just, it's absolutely crazy. Um, so Cass says he see, sees another masterclass brewing. I think so. I, I think so. I think so. 
Oh my God. Yeah. So and Sally's saying, I really like the Q and A's. Yeah. I, we're going to do another one tomorrow because, um, there's so, <laughs> there's so much, <laughs> there's so much. And we'll, we'll get into that, that Wendigo stuff tomorrow because it is it's so interesting. Um, and, uh, and the rake and, and all of those, uh, just a really unique, um, unique phenomenon that I don't think science has even begun to brush the, the surface of. Uh, and, you know, when we look at things like these weird locations like Skinwalker Ranch and stuff like that, um, you know, we realize just how much we don't know about the universe, <laughs> like just how stupid we are when it comes to the vast majority of what's out there. We just have, we have to know, we have no clue. So I wanted to um, read you guys a little bit um, today that I think it just is reflective of um, how we keep balanced in all of the crazy that not only we've been seeing in our world lately, but also just the crazy of the paranormal and, and all of these theories and whatnot and coming back to what we know um, to be able to keep ourselves centered because there is, there's so much crazy that's out there that theories and whatever. And we have to, we have to be careful to be able to, you know, recenter and, uh, and not get pulled off too far off the road. Right. Um, you know, because otherwise, you know, we might start seeing like, I don't know, maybe Galen's trying to take over the world. I could be, I could be wrong. If I have to say, if Galen takes over the world, it will be a very good world. <laughs> it will be a very good world. There will be more mice. I do. I, I will warn you about that. But if Galen takes over the world, um, it will be a very peaceful place. So, so that's a, that's a good thing. So check this out. So this reading is from Faith in the Valley by Ayala Van Zandt. Um, and I think this is a good reminder. So check it out. Take a moment to step back and watch the sunrise or set. If you can still be long enough to observe the process, or if you can be still long enough to observe the process, you will realize it is the earth, not the sun, that's moving. What a wonderful revelation. The world is in constant state of motion. Some things are moving, changing, turning, dying, and being born, while other things are constant. Once you realize this, you will know that wherever you were yesterday, you are not today. And whatever you are today, you will not be tomorrow. Whoever you will be tomorrow, you cannot be today. Whatever you know today will look different than it did yesterday. And what you don't know today, you will tomorrow. After all, the world is in the process of being made, and so are you. Be still, watch the process, learn from what you see, practice what you know, and then watch how it all changes. Watch how it all changes. It's, it's so true. It's so true. You know, And I think that's one of the things with the paranormal that people forget is the fact that everything is always in motion. We are always, it's uh, everything's always, always moving. And we, we can be still enough to observe, right? That, that motion and that movement. But, um, but every, everything is, is moving in and out, in and out of environments and frequencies and realms and all of these things. So we have to keep that in mind. So that being said, have to do some of our affirmations. So we go into the day with the right energy and can look forward to tomorrow's <laughs> spiritual health care with more of this stuff. So everybody take a breath. I'm a channel of peace and well-being and my need for peace is abundantly met. I unconditionally accept love and appreciate myself and who I am. I recognize and am grateful for the abundance that is constantly flowing into my life, which I can choose to allow or not. I feel with every breath a sense of peace and love. I help others by maintaining and tending to my connection with source as much as possible. This well-being is accessible to me even in a sea of uncertainty. And at this moment, all is well. I am able to liberate myself from my past and live with peace and serenity. And I can see and appreciate all the beauty and abundance of life around me. I am able to embrace love while letting go of fear. And I find the peace with the soothing silence of my inner being. Everybody take a breath. Thank you guys so much for this morning. Um, and uh, yeah, as I say, there is so much to dig into, so much. Um, Trey's asking, um, how could you guys get a, an autograph? Um, if you wanna, if you're if you're ordering my book, then if you're if you order it directly from me, then I can sign it and send it out to you. That's is probably the best way to do it. 
Um, because yeah, like if, so if it just, just private message, DM me, uh, private message me on the entity seeker site or whatever. And I could, we could set that up. That's no problem. Um, I've still got a couple of extra copies, so that's really good. I should hopefully be getting more copies soon, but, um, I do have a couple of extra copies. So if anybody wants them for, <laughs> um, signed and whatnot, just, yeah, DM me and we can, we can set that up. So that's no problem. Um, so yeah, so tomorrow, as I say, bring if, if you guys have uh, questions, cryptid questions and things like that, send them to me. Send them to me. Let's talk cryptids. This is fun because um, I love this subject. It's so cool. It's so cool. And there's like there's so much to talk about with it. So let's do that. Let's let's dig into it. Let's see where we can go with it. Um, and because there's like a spiritual side to it versus this, you know, um, this physical side. And we've also got um, I, I think there's some some very really good lessons about what nature brings into the paranormal that are that is uh, uh is definitely worth exploring and understanding on, on a deeper level. So we're going to do it. Um, so send me the questions, send them to me, Bigfoot and Yeti and all of those, you know, interesting beings, Wendigo and Rake and all of that stuff. So I will see you guys tomorrow morning on spiritual health care, 10 AM mountain time as always. And I hope you guys have an amazing afternoon. So I will talk to you then. Okay. Bye everybody. <laughs>